Usually I wait for inspiration around the meditation, just the moment of, and I was looking at the words of the Lord's Prayer uh, interpretation from the original Aramaic and um, kind of focused in on the word nourishment. Nourishment and that we come here for spiritual nourishment and that you could just as easily be on a mountaintop or in your, your study room at home during this time. But there is something in the accumulated field of energy that is nourishing and that is, it overcomes our own inner dialogue. And I'm thinking in, in terms of the Christ teachings how Jesus the Christ had this ability to suspend disbelief within those that he helped to overcome the inner dialogue of the mind, the story, the accumulated story that had, uh, had resulted in an outpicturing in that person's life and that his consciousness was so one-pointed and so powerful that it quieted the storm within the person that he was looking at and looking into their eyes and helping them to remember who they were and what this earth experience, this schoolhouse is all about. And that when we enter into meditation, it's very important, at least in my assertion, that this way shower example was and is an externalization of that same presence within each one of us. That in human form, that the human family required divine remembrance through an example, an outer example of the hero's journey or the overcomer, and that each one of us in this room have this same essence within us. We have this great Christ energy. We call it Christ. There's a great power in that. So wherever you're at in this moment, in your life experience, I invite you to go within, to release all outer concerns of your life situation, the curriculum of your life of living, and to be open and receptive to this great presence. It is alive within you. It is who you actually are as you live and move and have your being in your life circumstances, in your relationships, there is this great pearl of great price. And the pearl of wisdom, the pearl of knowing, the pearl of truth that beats and resides within your very heart. The only price around it is for each of us to be willing to be transformed by its presence. So as you sit where you are right now, you are here by divine appointment. So I invite you to let the world go. 
And the world is, if we bring it right down to its core, is really our mind. Our mind with its projections and its thoughts, beliefs, what we hold as true. But on this spiritual path, are we willing to suspend our disbelief that this presence that we call God is active and dynamic within each one of us? And that is the master healer of our lives. In this moment, you have the opportunity for complete healing. You have the opportunity to take up your bed and walk. You have the opportunity for your eyes to be opened to the truth of your nature. You have the opportunity to rise from the dead of your circumstances that may be weighing upon your heart. So I invite you to accept the gift of this moment. This Christ energy, this universal love energy that moves throughout all of this creation call it what you will. If you don't like the word Christ you can use whatever word you choose. It is only about allowing it to be within every part of us. And as you sit there where you are right now, breathing in and breathing out, relaxing, Letting go. We come to realize that each one of us are a vessel through which this universal life energy of love pours through. And our response is to allow it to pour through. We may have grievances within our consciousness around people, places, and things. We may have grievances towards ourselves that we should be more or better or different. Allow these voices of self to not detour you from the great inheritance that is yours.
So as you sit where you are, Can you allow yourself to be fulfilled, filled full of that which you seek? Can we allow that which we seek to fill us in this moment. Can you and we, as vessels of this love, can we hold people that we know in our hearts and minds in this moment that are standing in the need of a blessing of beholding them? Can we send them a blessing? I invite you to be of service to people in your life right now that you love, that maybe are having a big challenge, seemingly stuck in a place. And through your love, through your blessing, and through cooperation with the divine See that divine in them. See it magnified. So that it suspends their disbelief. Can we as a group body in this room right now be a blessing to so many others outside of this room? Can we as a group body holding that space, can we bless all of Canada? Can we bless all of the United States, all of Europe, all of Asia, all of Africa, South America, all of the countries on this planet, can we do that? I affirm that we do, we can, and we do. And we are right now. So as as you allow that blessing to take place, let us just be still for a few moments in the silence and allow the spirit to do its perfect work through us. And let us see throughout all of the planet Earth. Let us see people raising their arms in joyous exclamation and acceptance of this love, saying, yes, God, yes.
And so it is. Amen. Ordinarily, there is a thrust on inspiration and upliftment in a Sunday service. And sometimes I feel that there is also a need for an educational sharing. And hopefully that will be inspirational too. But I feel that in investigation of the truth of being, as Charles Fillmore called it, there is required a, an examination and an inquiry into what and who we are as spiritual beings, that we can praise and worship as some uh, houses of God will be engaged in, but oftentimes that imprisoned splendor is just residing within. And there is, at least in the unity faith tradition, a emphasis on education, which means to draw forth from you. I'm not giving you anything that you don't already know on a deep level. It is all about divine remembrance of what it is that we are. The unity tradition is, I would say, traditionally a Christ-based faith. That the teachings, the practical teachings of that have been handed down over 20 centuries are based upon the teachings of an avatar, a master teacher, that lived a very simple life. But his simplicity was born out of great inquiry, great times of prayer and meditation and initiation. That he wasn't just an exception, but a way shower of a way of life that you and I are growing into as spiritual beings. That is a demarcation, perhaps, of unity and other Christian or Christ-based teachings that salvation comes from self-understanding not through simply an acceptance of a way, but through honest and integrist inquiry into self, com continuous allowing of that which is not true to be given to that which is true, within ourselves so that we may release the false and stand within our own sovereignty as a Christ being ourselves. And that may sound like blasphemy to many. Oh well. That which dwells within each one of us is more beautiful and more powerful than we generally allow to have be expressed through us because of so many messages that we've received. These erroneous messages from our early years they are erroneous. They are not true. And so there is an ongoing educational process to release the imprisoned splendor of that which we are as spiritual beings, living in a spiritual universe and governed by spiritual law. And the Fillmores, the co-founders of this movement, had great challenges and trials within their own lives. But they sat within the silence 
of their own inner life. And they realized the divine self within them. Gradually letting go of erroneous ideas of who they were told that they were. Practiced the presence of God. Not only every day, but every moment of life. That is our task. To correct false belief and to allow ourselves to be changed, transformed through the renewal of our minds and hearts, the opening of our being to the divine that we are. So that is the curriculum as I see it. And I remember years ago being in a seminar in North Carolina, and there was a great theologian there, John Shelby Spong, some of you may have heard of him, a bishop, Episcopal bishop in New York City, now retired, but he said people generally go to church to feel safe, to have fellowship with their friends, but all in all, just to feel safe. And I think that that's probably a valid premise. We want to feel safe wherever we're at. We want to feel safe in our cars, in our homes, in our families, and everything. We want our health to be safe, our finances, everything about our lives. But that's only one level. The other level is one of what I continually refer to as soul. That within your inner architecture of who you are, there is a desire for self-remembrance. And I couldn't speak about this if I hadn't had many of these experiences of revealing in my own life experience to have these felt knowings of this divine revelation of revealing of what it is I am and what you are. So to just give our thinking to this belief that we'll be saved through just accepting the way of Jesus Christ Perhaps it is one step, a good step, a corrective step in a life that perhaps has been off the trail, so to speak, of one's purpose. But then there are other layers, other depths of consciousness, and today is really about Consciousness, that the educational process of spirituality is about consciousness, about how we make it through this life becoming more aware. Last Monday, Tuesday, I went to an appointment in, in Vancouver on Broadway, and um, for some reason there was all types of stuff that was coming up inside. And, and I didn't, to be quite honest with you, feel very safe. And yet I sat and I practiced what it is that I know to be true. And within five minutes, all of that started to clear. I grounded my energy I opened my heart, I accessed my I am self, which is the truth of being, and I started to feel better, and within five or ten minutes, I got out of my car and went to my appointment, happy, grounded, centered, and ready for the rest of my day. That's how quickly this 
quote, kingdom of heaven is. That's how close it is. It is right here and right now, and the only thing that is standing in the way of it is our own belief. And so when we talk about spiritual education, it's really examining our beliefs and whether or not they're true and whether or not they serve us. I wrote down here, belief systems serve only to keep a definition going for the mind to keep ourselves safe. But if we are spiritually unlimited in truth, in the mind of spirit, if we are spiritually unlimited, then it behooves us to have a conversation continually about what it is that we actually are. And in that way, there is salvation. We are saved from ourselves. And isn't that really what this is all about? It's a process of what may be called a shift in identity. Back in the early 80s, I was involved in a spiritual teaching, and the teacher was an amazing, I would call him a master of consciousness. And I remember going into a room where he was getting a manicure, simply having a manicure. His name was Russell Paul Schofield. And my, in 1981, I was a pretty young guy. And I was sitting there and I was like, I was sitting at the feet of the master. And he was just busy having a manicure. And I just wanted to ask him so many questions. I had so many questions about the spiritual path. And as time went on, my mind began to be very still. Just being in his field, his presence, because he was radiating a power that was not about the mind. It was about his consciousness, his being. He had learned through spiritual education, what that meant, that it wasn't the spiritual path was not about the mind. It was not about beliefs. It was about being within one's being. And at the end of the manicure, he just looked over at me and he said, Bruce, like he knew what was going on all that time. It's all a question of identification, Bruce with a twinkle in his eye. And I was told that this man was well over 100 years old. He looked to me to be about 70. He had known how to practice this regeneration within his being. Like they said in the Bible of old, people lived very, very old. And he was an amazing man. And so we're talking about consciousness. And in the unity faith tradition, we have what's called the metaphysical understanding of these teachings. And that the primary source of these teachings are the Bible. And I like to reference three figures that feel very close to me. Well, except for one. But three of them, John the Baptist, Herod, who I, I know. In metaphysics, these figures all represent different states of consciousness within each one of us. So sometimes it's hard for me to own the fact that I have an inner Herod but we have all of these, these people. They represent people. 
aspects of consciousness. John the Baptist is the figure in Scripture that talks about repent, repent, right? And we don't necessarily like that so much because we like to live our lives without feeling like we need to repent all the time. But repent simply means to change one's direction, to correct. And you and I, if we're working this path, we are always self-correcting, are we not? Within our own consciousness. And sometimes it's about shoulds and ought tos and all of that guilt stuff. But no, really, if we get all of that out of the way, we're coming back to a place of simply saying, okay, well, who am I now? And who am I now? And who am I now? And who am I now? Who am I in this moment in terms of my spirituality, of my indwelling God self? Am I in alignment with that or not? And Herod is that false mind within us that is so threatened by the innocence that's being born within us. Jesus represents the innocence, the initial consciousness of the truth that matures and matures and becomes a master of oneself. Even the book of Revelation that I referenced, I think it was just last week, the book of Revelation is a book of revealing ourselves to ourselves. And you may say, well, how so? That book just seems like something very strange. But in the beginning of it, there is a, re a revealing to John, who's on the island of Patmos, of a, an image that seemed brighter than the sun, the Alpha and the Omega self. That is the Christ self that is revealed to each of us in our lives metaphysically. And then there is this whole process of the angels and the horses of the apocalypse and all of this stuff, all of this cleansing going on that we go, oy vey, you know, is all of that really necessary? But what's really going on with that metaphysically? When we are introduced to the light of truth of the self, there is a cleansing that happens. It is a very dynamic process of letting go of that which is not true. And what happens in the end? A new heaven and a new earth is established. This isn't about Bible material that's made, that's... Um, I'm not asking any of us to live by a certain moral code here. You live your life from the inside out. That's yours to do, not mine to interfere with. But at the end, there is a new heaven and a new earth. That's a great promise and a revelation of the truth of being. And this past week, I was moved to look at these stages of consciousness. And in Christianity, there really isn't all that much dialogue around the phases of consciousness. Charles Fillmore calls a, talks about moving from sense consciousness to Christ consciousness and that you and I are all in this process. But there is a great deal of information from the East around this process. And I wanted to share with you some of that right now. 
And you may see yourself in each one of these phases. I know I do. These phases of consciousness are called gunas. Sattvic, rajasic, and tamasic. Sounds maybe strange to some of you, but they are states of consciousness that we all pass through. And we, it's not like we go from one to the next and we don't go back into these different places because we do. But the sattvic state of consciousness is really moving towards Christ consciousness. And I would like to share that with you now. The tamasic state is one that in personality is impulsive, arrogant, and in, has an inability to see any other point of view, overindulgence in sense enjoyment. In the rajasic, we have authoritative, have an authoritative temper, a color judgment of the ethical and unethical, what is to be done and what is not to be done. In sattvic, we have a nobility, a calmness, full of love and affection, discrimination or discernment between what ought to be done and what ought not to be done. And one last area that I'd like to just share in the world view. The world view of these three states of consciousness. In the tamasic, we have fanatic in their beliefs, devotion, views, and values in life without recognizing the cause and the effect. Views the world as if it exists for him or her alone with a concept of total self-importance. The worldview of the Rajasic is recognizes the separateness and the distinctions among people and divides them into different classes, castes, creeds, races, and nationalities. And in the sattvic, the worldview is that the, this person recognizes the truth of existence perceives the oneness underlying all of the universe. So in a very real sense, you and I are investigating these states of consciousness. And they come up within us all the time. We may have a moment of sattvic realization of the oneness of all life and the nobility of our brothers and sisters and our own being. But then we forget. It's back and forth. Two steps forward, one step back type of life. I wanted to share though, because we really benefit from the illustrations of these states of consciousness, and we are all very familiar with Tomasic and Rajasic. I wanted to share with you something very beautiful from a woman. She only lived 33 years. And her name was Catherine of Siena. She lived from 1347 to 1380. And when she was six years old, she was walking in a mountain area and she had a vision of Jesus and three disciples. And it totally changed her life for the rest of it. And I would just like to share with you something that she wrote called Consumed in Grace. She said, I first saw God when I was a child, six years of age. The cheeks of the sun were pale before him, and the earth acted as a shy girl like me. Divine light entered my heart from his love that did never fully wane. Though indeed, dear, I can understand how a person's faith can at times flicker. For what is the mind to do with something that becomes the mind's ruin? A God that consumes us in his grace. I have seen what you want. It is there. A beloved, infinite tenderness. 
a beloved infinite tenderness. And I was captivated by her words that said, for what is the mind to do with something that becomes the mind's ruin? Interesting that we are constantly working to attain a deeper level of consciousness, the sattvic consciousness, to be in the world but not of the world. But we're utilizing the very structures that at some point need to be very quieted and subservient, actually, to or a servant to the soul, to the spirit. Eckhart Tolle, in his writing, says that once he awakened, that 80% of his mind activity stopped, became very, very still, until he was prompted to do something by his own being. So much of this process, we, we go, well, how do I do this? How do I go about it? How do I transform my life? And how it's revealed itself to me in closing here is that it's, a, it's about grace. And grace is the divine intelligence that we live in and move in and have our being in. Grace is that, that love that knows what it is that we are, that knows that we are in an incarnation or a body-mind and we are dealing with all kinds of stuff, but that it holds the vision for us of what we are in truth, in spite of our quirks and foibles and fears and all of the rest, it knows us. The Holy Spirit knows us and is constantly calling us to be in an alignment with its divine will. All the while probably laughing and having a good time with all the things that we do. So, this really, in a very big way, is about you and I just allowing ourselves to move through these states of consciousness, tamasic, rajasic, and sattvic, in a graceful way knowing that God, Spirit, has our back, knows who we are. And if you have moments during your week, in fact, your homecoming work, if you choose to accept it this week, is to watch your consciousness, to see where you are within these three levels and if you find yourself getting into the tamasic state, just give yourself permission to go, go up higher. Go up higher into the, the actual, the actual self. God bless. Thank you.